Hello everyone, Mimikins here. Today's video is covering all of the high rank events in Monster Hunter World and has been updated to include the elusive layered weapons and armors that people may have missed out on. I will include pictures of all the items so you know exactly what to expect. Events are rotated in and out on a weekly basis and they will normally all make an appearance during one of the fests. You can check the events online in game but I'll give a link to the official schedule which will also include upcoming events within a 3 week period. Base game players will have access to these events when they are available. The layered weapons are specific to master rank weapons only, however you can still farm extra materials for these if you want to buy the expansion later down the road, as all event items stay. One thing to point out about the layered weapon is that the materials get refunded if you want to change your style, however you will need extra materials if you want multiple weapons with the same design, unless of course you keep refunding each time you change your weapon. You can only apply a layered weapon design to weapons of the same type. There are many events in high rank that award extra armor spheres or materials. The ones I'm covering have unique items that can only be obtained while the event is up. Where Sun Meets Moon. These drop downy crake tickets. You can use these to craft the high rank downy crake love jewel blades. These can be upgraded in Iceborne to master rank if you wish to do so. They can also be made into a layered weapon costing one ticket each. This item is super cute and leaves a trail of fluff when you use them. Timberland Troublemakers. These drop bristly crake tickets used to craft the bristly grudge. This has a layered version as well. The weapon looks like a pincushion and has some unique animations when you use it. Every Hunter's Dream drops Master Craftsman Blueprints. These are required to make the Wyvern Ignition, which is one of the best greatswords to use in the base game for its sheer raw power. It was actually a fan design that made it into the game. Who could resist a rocket powered greatsword? It does have a Master Rank version upgrade as well, however it's been overshadowed by more powerful Master Rank weapons. I still recommend this weapon if you haven't bought the expansion, and I 100% recommend farming extra tickets to get this as a layered weapon design. Midnight Mayhem drops first fleet tickets that can be used to craft the Sapphire Star Lance. This also has a master rank upgrade available called the Shining Star Lance. While it's a good option for a crafted paralysis weapon, there are other higher raw damage dealing weapons out there. There is a layered version of this weapon if you like this model, and there's also a white and yellow version of this design which you can get if you have spare appreciation tickets. A Royal Pain drops full tickets which can be used to craft the Mosswine Mask, as well as the full feline layered armour. These are only for the headsaw and can be mixed and matched with other armours. I'm a little disappointed there's no feline body for us hunters, and I'm still a little jealous about the Handler's feline outfit that appears during the Appreciation Fest. I really would love that outfit for my character. King's No No Fear drops full ticket twos. These are one of the materials you need to craft two layered armors. If you want the Wiggler head, you'll need one of these tickets combined with Wiggler tickets from the event Wiggle Me This. You can also use the Wiggler tickets to craft a high rank Wiggler head, which is somewhat useful for wide range builds in the base game. If you want the sealed eye patch, you will need four ticket twos combined with black bandages from Scrapping with the Shamels event quest. You could also use the black bandages to craft the high rank sealed eye patch. I've never used this armour at all, and since there's a layered armour version available, unless you are a collector, I'd probably just get the layered version. USJ Gold Star Treatment drops Azura Star Shards, which can be used to craft the Azura Star set for your Palco. You can also craft the base weapon of the Azura Star Blade, as well as unlocking titles, background and pulls for your guild card. In Iceborne, there is a Master Rank quest bro which will require these shards along with new items to craft a Master Rank version of the Palco armor, weapon, and Laird armor. USJ Blazing Azure Stars, not to be confused with the Master Rank quest, this is the second part of the High Rank quest which drops Azure Star Gems, used to craft the Star Lord set. This was a very useful set in the base game for elemental builds as it allowed you to create the set bonus for Critical Element for extra damage. These armor pieces could also be used with the Rathala set to achieve the same bonus. This quest is also required for the second stage of the Longsword upgrade to turn it into an Azure Starblade. 
There are some PS4 exclusive event crossovers from the Horizon Zero Dawn franchise. This game has been released on PC as well and Capcom haven't announced any plans to make this available on PC as well. This is a three part quest series, Lessons of the Wild drops the Watcher lenses and they're needed to craft the Watcher outfit for your palco. This is listed under full body armour and you need to wear the full set. The Proving drops Nora Brave trophies used to craft Aloy's bow as well as the Aloy armour. You'll need two of these Nora Brave trophies along with Aloy tickets from the event quest The Heart of the Nora to craft the layered body armour. This quest also allows you to craft the high rank Gamma armour. There's also a guild card background, title and pose to collect from the Horizon Zero Dawn quests. If you are an Iceborn player and play on the PS4, there's also a Master Rank version available to upgrade these items. I have a 3 part video on each quest on my YouTube video list, which I'll link in the description for more information. They also contain new items only available in Iceborn as well as how to upgrade older items. A rush of blood drops Mega Man tickets, you will need them to craft the Mega Man Palico armour. You will also need these tickets if you want to craft the Master Rank version along with Unity tickets. This changes your Palico animations and sound effects to give a more retro vibe. The quest is against a tiny Odegaron and a large one with the Mega Man themed music. If you ever wanted to see a size comparison of largest and smallest monsters, this is your quest. It also unlocks a new guild card background, title and pose. Code Red is the Devil May Cry crossover event and you can use the red orbs to craft the high rank Dante armor as well as the Dante Devil Sword, which is actually a charge blade. This can be upgraded to Master Rank and Iceborne as well as being used as a layered weapon skin for the charge blade. However, both will require unity symbols. This quest unlocks a Devil May Cry themed guild card, pose and titles. SDF Silent Deadly and Fierce is an Assassin's Creed crossover event and drops Senu feathers which are used to craft the Bayak Glared armor, as well as a new specialized tool called this Assassin's Hood. The tool has a long duration, increasing your movement speed out of combat and allows you to perform a sneak attack on a monster with increased damage. The mantle can also be upgraded to have extra slots in Iceborne. The quest will also unlock a new background title and pose for your guild card. A Visitor from Eorzea Extreme is a crossover event from Final Fantasy XIV against the Extreme Behemoth. This drops a glamour prism used to craft the Draken Laird armour to make your character look like a dragoon. This was one of the most challenging fights in the base game as it required everyone to work in sync and meet DPS checks in order not to be one-shotted by a ecliptic meteor. Although the challenge isn't what it once was with the introduction of Master Rank gear, I'm sure there's still a risk of being one-shotted if you're not paying attention. The quest also unlocks the Warrior of Light title for your guild card. Egg Lovers United drops Kuluyaku tickets. These are used to craft the Kuluyaku Head Alpha which has the skill Pro Transporter. This can be useful for quests that require you to transport eggs and various other items back to camp. If you want to get the layered armor version of this head, you'll need two of these tickets combined with one full ticket 3 from the event quest The Greatest Jagras. This isn't your typical Jagras and Tremor Resist helps out a lot here. The quest also drops many of the base game jewels, so it's a good one to farm if you don't have the expansion and need more decorations. You can also use full ticket 3s to craft the skull layered armor. The unknown skulls you can get from gathering bone piles in Elder's Recess. The names Lovasioth drops beetle tickets used to craft the beetle glare armour. This quest also has a high drop rate of base game decos and is a little tougher than your average Lovasioth. A flash in the pan drops black crystal tickets used to craft the Shadow Shades high rank armour. If you were playing during the Twilight Fest and have extra Summer Twilight tickets, which were the login bonus during the event, you can also craft the Shadow Shades layered armor. Contract Woodland Spirit drops various crafting materials which can be used to craft the high rank Siri armor set. You need to equip the full set and it will change your character's appearance to look and sound like Siri from The Witcher. You can also get the layered armor for Siri and Geralt from The Witcher 3 using mutagens from this quest.
the Zerial Dual Blades, which are very good in the base game for overall raw damage and dragon element if you wish to unlock it with free element. You can also make these into master rank versions in Iceborne using unity symbols, as well as making it into a layered weapon skin. You can use materials from this quest to upgrade the Witcher Sword to a Witcher Plus Sword for high rank. This can be further upgraded to master rank version in Iceborne, as well as a layered weapon skin. Some of the base items need materials from the special assignment Contract Trouble in the Ancient Forest. If you haven't done this quest yet, I do have a guide on the channel with all the hidden items you can get from the side quests. Then there's also the various Arch-Tempered Elders. AT Valhazak in the Deathly Quiet Curtain, he drops Valhazak tickets which you need to craft the high rank Valhazak Gamma set. It's great for making survivalistic builds in the base game. The super recovery allows you to constantly regenerate health, as long as you don't have a damage over time effect on you, such as poison. It works well with skills like recovery up and recovery speed. You can also use these tickets to craft the death stench layered armor. The Valhazak Gamma layered armor is also available to craft, however you will need Iceborne for this as some of the materials needed are only available from the Guiding Lands, which is an endgame zone in Iceborne. A Whisper White main against an Arch Tempered Kirin drops Kirin tickets required to craft the high rank Kirin Gamma armor. You can also use these tickets to craft the Blossom layered armor. A lot of people wonder where you get this armor as they expect it to come from the Spring Blossom Fest, but it's hiding out here with Kirin. If you're an Iceborn player, you can also use these tickets to craft the weird Kirin Gamma armor. The Scorn of the Sun Drops Teostra tickets used to craft the Teostra Gamma armor. This was a popular armor in the base game as an alternative to Behemoth armors for the Master's Touch set bonus. You can even use it with Teostra's Master Rank armors to achieve the set bonus. Some people who don't care much for defense still use these parts to achieve their desired DPS sets in Iceborn. This also unlocks the Dante Laird armor. This can be worn as individual pieces so you can mix and match it with other armors to create a more unique look. If you're in Iceborne, there's also the option to craft the Teostra Laird Gamma armor. The Eye of the Storm against AT Kashala drops Kashala tickets used to craft the high rank Kashala Gamma set. It has a set bonus of Nullify Wind Pressure. This is amazing for wind pressure builds which are useful against monsters such as Kashala. You may have noticed your character reacts to wind, making you unable to attack or react. This set bonus stops that from happening and is really useful for melee players who need to get up close. You can also craft the Guild Cross Weird Armor. The Gamma Armor is also available to craft if you have the items from Iceborne. When Blue Dust Surpasses Red Lust drops Glenastra tickets which are needed to craft the high rank Glenastra Gamma Armor. The 2 set bonus stamina cap increases the maximum stamina your character can have, while the Mind's Eye Ballistic stops melee weapons from deflecting, and for ranged users it increases the critical distance range of all ammo types. It also allows you to craft the Sakura Laird Armor, which is a full armor set and changes the appearance and voice of your character to look and sound like Sakura from Street Fighter. This also requires SFV Ticket 2, which I'll cover where to get later on in the video. As well as the Lunastra Gamma Armor if you have Iceborne. Undying Alpine Glow drops Zora Magdoras tickets used to craft the high rank Zora Gamma Armor. The set bonus of critical status increases the amount of status buildup applied on critical hits. You can also use tickets to craft the Origin Laird Armor. And of course the Zora Gamma Laird Armor if you have Iceborne. Like a Moth to the Flame is a fight against an Arch Temper Xenojiva. It drops Xenojiva tickets which can be used to craft the Xeno Gamma Armor. I use this set a lot in base game for the set bonus Razor Sharp Spear Shop. For melee players it half sharpness loss and for bowgun players it has a chance for you not to consume ammo. 
which not only saves you resources but stops you having to reload as often. Well, a good set in the base game, in Iceborne you can get a charm with the same effect. You can use these tickets to unlock the commission Laird armor, as well as the Gamma armor if you have Iceborne. The Heralds of Destruction Cry is a fight against an Arch Temper Nergiganti. It was the last Arch Temper monster added in the base game. When I came across this guy wearing my hair and commerce, he hit like a truck and brought back those nightmares of when I first came across Nergiganti as a new player and dreaded the moment he flew up into the air. This quest drops Nergiganti tickets, which can be used to craft the high rank Nergiganti Gamma armor. This set has the bonus of haste and recovery which heals back a small amount of health after a certain number of hits. It varies depending on weapon and combos used. You can craft the Ryu Laird armor which makes your character look and sound like Ryu from Street Fighter. You will also need Street Fighter 5 Ticket 3s, I'll cover that later in the video on how to get them. You can also craft the Nergiganti Laird armor gamma set using these tickets and items from Iceborne. There are limited 10 quests also listed under Arena Challenges. You can find the Arena Lass in either of the Gathering Hubs. She normally wears blue but can have a different outfit depending on the fest running. These quests give you preset gear and a choice of 5 weapons to complete the quest in. Gajalaka Outbreak drops Summer Field Insect Guides which can be used to craft the Butterfly Layered Armor. You can also use them to craft the high rank beetle queen armor for females or the butterfly armor for males. The low rank version of these armors comes from the quest Vespoid Infestation and drops spring insect field guides. This is a short easy quest designed for people who have just started the game to grab a few pieces of armor. However, Capcom have introduced the defender set just before the launch of Iceborne which you can purchase from the NPC, the stats are way better so these are mostly a collection piece, I've not seen another use for these tickets. Down the muddy path drops Street Fighter 5 tickets used to create the full Ryu set, which makes your character look and sound like Ryu from Street Fighter. These armors don't have very good stats and they did add an upgraded high rank version of these armors using Street Fighter 5 3 tickets, which can be found from any of the Satsui no Hado quests. There's three of these quests against a Nergiganti covering each one of the weapon types so you can play something you feel comfortable using. These tickets are also used to craft the Ryu Laird armor in conjunction with the Nergiganti tickets from earlier. Empress and Full of Bloom drops the Street Fighter V 2 tickets which can be used to craft the full Sakura armor, which makes your character look and sound like Sakura from Street Fighter. Both this armor and the Ryu armor have to be worn as complete sets. These tickets can be combined with Lunastra tickets to get the Laird armor. Of course, there's also the high rank siege against Kulth Tarth, which can be found in the Gathering Hub when the event is up. This has multiple armor sets which you can craft along with many, many weapons which can be upgraded to master rank levels. Some of the Kiara weapons are the best in game for elemental builds as they come in with critical element, making them extremely flexible to build with. This holds true in Iceborne as well once you upgrade them to master rank levels. You will also get Bushi tickets which can be used to craft these armors with. As well as these layered armor sets. I think that's everything from the high rank event quest, if I've missed anything please let me know in the comments below. I've also previously made a video on all the weird armors you can get from the base game, which also includes the male variations. If you're interested feel free to check it out, the link is in the description. Thanks for watching, please support the channel by liking and subscribing and I'll see you next time.